Okay, on here, a real mess of a system coming in this weekend. High impact event, potentially even an ice storm for many areas. We're going to see both this types of precipitation, ice pellets and freezing rain. Ice pellets looks more like uh, hail coming down, and it can really accumulate on the ground, looking more like snow at the end. And then freezing rain, this is the one that brings in power edges as it accretes on power lines and trees and tree limbs fall over. So we're likely going to see a lot of that this weekend. Uh, and it's a slow-moving system, and that's the problem. It brings in a lot of moisture. And it just hangs out over the area through the weekend and even into early next week. Uh, so looking at the timing right now, you can see Saturday morning, we're building in freezing rain across southern Ontario. Ice pellets are what you're seeing in the kind of orangey cream color. And then snow across the cottage, uh, into cottage country and parts of the Ottawa Valley. Uh, rain into southwestern Ontario, but conditions really start to go downhill as we um, press in towards the afternoon and evening hours. Rainfall uh, uh, continues into the southwest, but you can start to see the freezing mark um, tracking further south. So we get into freezing rain towards London, Niagara, um, ice pellets in towards the GTA, uh, and then again that band of snow will be setting up across the north and kind of pressing further south into the afternoon. And by the time we reach the evening hours, we get a little bit of a break. Things start to ease off a little bit in terms of the moisture uh, supply to, the, uh, to southern Ontario. But that means that we're just going to be dealing with some drizzle. And that's likely when we're going to start to see some power outages um, throughout the overnight and really tricky travel as we head in towards the morning hours. Looking by Sunday morning, we get another significant surge of precip likely seeing widespread freezing rain and ice pellets again across southern Ontario and the Arctic air might be stubborn enough to stick throughout the GTA into the afternoon that would lead us to several more hours of freezing rain on Sunday so something we're definitely going to be watching out for right now it looks like the hardest hit areas will be across areas just west and north of the GTA that includes uh, the Kitchener Waterloo area just Hamilton uh, most of the GTA as well will be impacted by some um, heavier precip. So this is likely where we're seeing over 25 millimeters of ice accretion um, across southern Ontario. But that doesn't mean you guys won't see um, significant impacts across the rest of the region, especially if you're seeing snow to freezing rain. And the problem here becomes when we start to see those wind gusts peaking into the afternoon and evening hours, we start to see gusts anywhere from 50 to 70 kilometers per hour. And that really helps to ice everything over, which you've already seen, and then cause even more power outages. Up and towards the north, though, they're dealing with some snowfall. This really comes in more so Sunday into Monday across areas uh, into the Nickel Belt, into northeastern Ontario, southern Quebec. Uh, so just to quickly go over the timing again, uh, we start to see the timeline across Saturday. Really, um, uh, icy roads start to um, really become more apparent into the evening and overnight period. And then by Sunday, this is when power just uh, really start to increase um, across southern Ontario. So be careful this weekend. Avoid driving if you can and uh, stay tuned to the Weather Network. Hydro crews are preparing for widespread power outages across southern Ontario as a significant ice storm pushes into the region. One thing that we continue to look at is, is how we can predict the impact of of a storm um, and the impact on our grid. So we've put some enhanced analytics in place at our grid control center with respect to looking at prior events, looking at uh, the number of outages, looking at the number of customers that are impacted so that we can determine how many uh, crews we should, uh, we should have on call. There is a risk of more than 20 millimeters of ice accretion in some areas. Places like Hamilton, Woodstock, Stratford and the KW region are likely to be hit the hardest. The bigger impact that we have is the ice accretion on trees and then depending on the wind impact and the, the, the force of the wind, if the wind ends up knocking over a tree that's ice laden and heavy, it can have a, a more significant impact on downing wires and, and cutting power off to customers. While this system has been compared to the ice storm of April 2013, meteorologists here at the Weather Network say this one will have a greater impact on a much larger population. Uh, so when we look at the analytics around this event, uh, we compare it to one of our um, typical large storms. It is a big storm and we are ready and, and we're, uh, we're prepared to be able to respond and get the power back on as, as quickly and safely as possible. So the camera's chirping and look at it and if you look at the top zero and in two seconds zero two seconds every time it does that it chirps so it's trying to write another file and it's not capable of doing that because there's no room left on the card so for whatever reason the camera is not detecting that the end of card has been reached and it's still trying to write files 
So these are the files that are on the card. Uh, just like my old S3 cam, it, it saves in 4 gigabyte chunks, which are about 36 minutes long. Uh, the other one was actually about 35, so... Yeah, and I'm not going to get information on those, and I'll show you why. So I select all of these, and we're getting 31.2 gigabytes, which is too high for a 32 gigabyte card. It should be about 27, 28. So if I take all the ones that are just 4 gigabytes, and look at that, 27.9. So at this point the card is full and the camera still, for whatever reason, writing to the card. Either the camera doesn't know or the card's not telling it that it's full. So let's look at the files individually. Play this one. And it's working fine. This is the wonderful look out my window now. <laughs> I'm not going to get very good weather cam footage from this particular spot because my entire window is screen top to bottom so no matter where I put the camera it's going to be pointing through the screen and surprisingly the picture is pretty clear I still got the plastic protective plastic on the lens I haven't taken that off yet and it doesn't seem to be affecting it any which actually kind of surprises me so we did get a little bit of ice today I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not right down in here you can kind of see it falling it was just it I started as ice pellets and then just turned into regular rain after that but because it's you know so messed up from shooting through the screen you can't really see it but we did get it so this file played whoops so this file played right to the end. First four gigabyte file worked fine. I took a second one. And nothing. It will not play. As you can see, there's no information down here other than the size and when it was recorded. Same with this one. And that one. That one. That one. One, that one, that one, and that one. So the only thing I recorded here is the first file, it four gigabytes, and after that nothing worked. So that tells me this is probably a six or eight gigabyte card disguised as a 32 gigabyte card. That's what's printed on it, so it's a fake card for sure, it's garbage. No good for me. And it's probably one way or another been formatted so the device thinks it's 32 gigabytes but it actually won't record so that's the result of that card well, the second test of the new SG cam is complete and I used my 64 gigabyte card this time uh, according to the manual uh, maximum size memory card you can use is 32 gigabytes and that's the same as my other SJ cam and the 64 gigabyte card worked in it so I tried this one now I didn't get the full time in and the reason for that is because I want to make sure the camera's ready to go for today the second part of our nasty ice storm I want to make sure it's in the window for that uh, problem is is recorded for quite a long time. Normally, when I'm using the as a scooter cam, the 64 gigabyte card will get me between seven and nine hours worth of recording. And I was waiting for the camera to shut off, telling me that the card was full, and it just kept going and going. The light was still flashing, so it you know was still recording. But it just it seemed to be going too long, so I kind of figured maybe. No, it wasn't detecting the end of the card and it was still recording 
I just wasn't sure, so I stopped it early. Uh, it wasn't quite full yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually quite amazed by this. You see down here the total recording time is just over 13 hours. Yeah, it's 54.3 gigabytes, so it was almost full anyways. But that's just 13 hours. I've never got that much recording time out of this card on any of my cameras, so I'm, I'm rather impressed by that. And each one, you know, 35 minutes, 4 gigabytes. Same as before with the 32 gigabyte card. Uh, but the difference is... Play the first file. And it works all the way through. And by this time, the second one works. Third one works. All the way down, right to the very end. And I stopped this early so it didn't end on its own. It's nighttime now. Actually, this is like early morning. It's about 4.30, 5.30 in the morning, something like that. I don't remember now. So everything worked. I'm quite impressed. Very impressed, actually. Um, I'm a little confused by this, though. So all these files are all different. Okay. 35 minutes, 35 minutes, 35 minutes, 5 minutes, 35, 35. Ah, I see what's happening. Okay, that explains it. See, it's getting dark here now. It's now nighttime. There's less information in the video. As you can see, 39 minutes, it's actually gone up a bit because the screen got dark. And now that it's nighttime, everything starts, there's very little information in here. So that hour and a half for the same size file. So that leaves less information and longer recording time for the same size file. That tells me that they have made improvements to this camera. Look at that, almost two hours. I am very impressed with that. So they've changed the way that it stores files. That explains why I got the 13 hours instead of you know, a maximum of nine. It's just over 13 hours. So I am very impressed. So this test was definitely successful. Um, maybe when I do the long recording today, it won't last 13 hours because it'll be daylight the whole time. But maybe I'll reach the end of the card this time and find out what happens. I must say, I am very impressed. So this is the memory card that came with the SJ Cam. So today, I did an official test on the card and confirmed what it was that I was expecting. So I ran this program on it, and it's called H2 Test W. I don't know what that stands for, but that's the program I use. It's free. Um, I get the first thing that came up with the warning. 32,033 of 32,034 megabytes tested. And the reason for that is the operating system uses part of the memory so I just it, it doesn't get get tested or used or anything so that's what the warning is about so that that's normal and then as a result of the test the media is likely to be defective and 4.3 gigabytes were okay and 26.8 gigabytes of data were lost now the way this program works is it saves files on the card I believe 150 megabytes at a time, I think, up to the point of one gigabyte and it starts a new file. So it created four files and the four files worked and after that none of the files uh, came back. So they showed up as defective. So my, sus my original suspicion was this was either a six or eight gigabyte card 
And the reason for that is the SG cam saves files in 4 gigabyte chunks. The first 4 gigabyte chunk would work, and then anything after that wouldn't. So that would be you know, up to 8, 8 gigabytes with the second, the second chunk. So I figured it was either an 8 or a 6. And I now believe this is a 6 gigabyte card. And the reason for that is the next one is 4.3. So the next gigabyte after that would be 5.4, 5.5, something like that. And doing a quick calculation, the actual memory storage in a 6 gigabyte card is 5.58. So that is why the next file would not work. So that tells me this is definitely a 6 gigabyte card disguised as a 32 gigabyte Kingston. So it's definitely a fake card. I'm going to be contacting the Amazon seller notifying that this card is junk, it's fake, I want one that works, and if you don't send me one that works, I'm going to keep asking until you do. So we'll see what happens with that. So this is the first time I had this problem with Amazon. This is, this is normally an eBay issue. Uh, so many fake crap out there. So this is the first time I had an issue like this with Amazon. The camera itself is fine. I don't have an issue with it. It's actually quite a nice camera. It's been improved since my first SJ cam, so I'm happy about that. And I haven't been having any issues with it at all. Yeah, but this card, and I'm going to check, I don't remember if it actually mentioned in the description, the seller description, whether or not it comes with a card or if it was just a gift, but either way, it needs to work. So I was actually surprised when I saw this. I was actually surprised when I saw the charger too, because it comes with an extra battery and a charger. I don't remember seeing that in the description, so I'll have to check that out, and I will let you know the results. So if you have a card that you're suspicious of or seems to be failing, you can test it quite easily. This is where I downloaded the H2 Test W from. It's available from Softpedia. I'll put a link in the description for you. It's an absolutely free download. There's no charge whatsoever. You don't have to sign up for anything. You just download it and it's ready to go. Uh, it's available for pretty much all Windows systems. Uh, there's no mention here for Apple operating systems, so I'm not sure if there's another page here. Link to another page, I'm not sure. Not sure if it's available. But there's different different uh, software packages out there for checking memory. And that, this one I like the best. I tried a few of them. The uh, only issue with this one is it is slow. Uh, according to, oh, it's been updated now. Okay, according to the original article I read on it, it was from 2008, and it wasn't designed for the high capacity cards that we have today, so it, it was really slow. But it's been updated apparently uh, last year, a year ago, pretty much. But it is still slow. My 32 gigabyte card, it took two and a half hours to scan it. So. But it just, you don't have to install this program. It comes in a zip file, you unzip it and just click on the executable and it just opens right up. It, it doesn't install at all. Uh, just make sure you format the card first. Make sure you don't have any files on it that you want to lose because it will write to the entire card. And it'll give you results at the end. So, pretty simple. Pretty, no, I was going to say pretty quick. <laughs> Not really quick. <laughs> quick, to, quick to load and start. But I guess it does take a while. So it doesn't use much resources of your computer, so you're free to do pretty much whatever you want while it's going. So you don't have to sit there and wait for it, which is kind of nice. So that's what I used, and this is what I'm going to recommend. Uh, like I said, I'll put a link in the description for you. I kind of I suspected the card was no good. Anyways, this this just confirmed it for me. So as to my request for a replacement card. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole conversation. It got kind of heated, actually. He insulted me a couple times. Uh, the first time he told me if I needed a better card, then he suggested buying a higher capacity or something. And I explained to him, I said, it's not that the capacity's not there. He says, it's, it's a fake card. It says 32 gigabytes, and it's only 6 and he told me he can't replace it because it's it's part of a bundled package so I told him that or actually even before that 
he was going to compensate me three US dollars and that insulted me even further <laughs> I was pretty ticked by this point so I threatened to return the whole package either send me a new card a replacement card or replacement package or something like that and he said this is not a good idea so I put my return request in and he cancelled it how is the seller able to cancel a return request I, I don't understand that but anyways um, he finally agreed to send me a new card and at this point I, I told him I says as long as the card works I'll still give you a positive review and blah 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 whatever so I got the card and tested it and it was fine it was a genuine card it's still a brand I haven't heard of but um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do I, I was going to recommend people not to buy from the seller uh, in the end he did do the right thing he sent me a, uh, a fresh card a real card but again at the end his final message to me was don't bother me again so that kind of ticked me off so I didn't give him a positive review I didn't give him a negative review like I say in the end he did do the right thing but I'm not gonna recommend not buying from him uh, I'm not gonna buy from him myself I'm just gonna kinda let things go the way they are so I understand uh, if, if you're angry at me for doing this you gotta understand I hate fake sellers that's why I don't like buying from eBay anymore uh, they they don't seem to care anymore about you know the integrity of their business <clears throat> I got lots of examples I could show you of that but Amazon does they don't tolerate fake sellers at least they never used to I don't know now but I don't I don't put up with it I don't care if it's if it's a piece of a package if you send it to me it's got to work if it doesn't work you're either going to replace it or it's going back so that's how I operate uh, I just so tired of getting crap from people from sellers anyways businesses and stuff I don't deal with a lot of businesses that take advantage of their customers so as the end result uh, I got the card that actually works and I am happy so everything is working good and I'm happy with the new camera and you'll be seeing footage from it so that's it for this video thanks for watching